Welcome to episode two of the GFD North podcast. My name is Ryan Woodhouse and today I'll be interviewing Peter Amakri. So Pete will be giving a presentation on Saturday the 6th of August this year. So if you want to head over to gfdnorth.uk to see the rest of the lineup and to get notified of when tickets will be available, you can also sign up to see the social media channels and see the other presenters. Now, just to intro Peter, Peter's experience goes back to 2001 when he started at Lionhead Studios working as both a concept and texture artist helping create the world of Albion. Since 2001, he's worked for various companies and outsourcing studios including Leading Light Concept Design, Two Tall Productions and CineSight where he created digital map painting and texturing on the films John Carter and World War Z. Most recently, he's worked for companies such as Blacklist Creative, Avium, and he's also worked on various projects for Marvel Films through Luma Pictures. At the moment, he's currently working for Darewise on an unannounced project. So today, Pete will be sharing with us some files, PSDs and Blender scenes to give us some insight into how he creates his work. We'll also be diving into topics such as what the differences between the film and game jobs are, where the inspiration behind his work comes from, and also what qualities he would look for in a portfolio and person looking to break into the job today. So without further ado, can I please welcome Peter to the podcast. Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Ryan. Th thanks for uh, inviting me. Yeah, it's great to have you on. It'll be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Yeah, I can't wait to get into this. It's many years of experience that you've had. Uh, I just can't wait to go over some of the, the tips and some of the things that you've got ready for, prepared for us all. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll just pull up your portfolio. Okay, can yes, see I see now. I see it now. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, it's my ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. So, so this is one of the images that we have presented on GFDNorth.UK. So this is City in the Clouds. Yeah. So was this a personal piece that you created? It is. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hmm. I want to talk through this. Sometimes I'm just seized with a desire to just create something, just to do something, and it'll start off with a door, and then I'll, in in Blender I'll create a, a an array modifier. So I've got two two doors next to each other, and then I make a window, and before you know it, I've got a whole, you know, sort of well, it's not a cityscape as such, but I've got an image like this, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's it, it's also I'm also often seized with a desire to sort of create. I don't know, just sort of, sort of different different interpretations of architectural traditions, kind of thing. I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm, I'm not expressing myself as well as I'd like at the, at the yeah. moment, but just sort of. You can see in there, I hope you can see in there anyway, sort of standard architectural uh, tropes, not necessarily tropes, but standard architectural shapes. Yeah, that's like right. it does seem like a combination of different architectural styles. Now, is yeah. that something that you create by looking at different references or is this something that comes from your head? Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think, especially for older artists, um, in the past I would have, I would have, leaned qu quite heavily on um look disclaimer I'm, I'm i'm 50 okay but when i was first starting out i think there just wasn't enough up here to call on so i, I would rely on reference re reference images a lot more than i do now yeah, yeah. but I, th I think there's enough kind of memory up here for me not to rely on that quite so much because I, I I feel that if you if you rely on reference images too much I've I've honestly believe that it, it kind of dampens your own dampens down the emergence of your own original ideas or your own original interpretations yeah do you see what I mean it's like if like if I if I just relied on reference images I, I, I would I would to a certain extent I, I'd be sort of recreating parts of those images yeah. if i just rely on the images in my head the memories of architectural of romanesque architecture or 
or classical architecture, whatever it is. If, yeah. if I'm relying just on those for the basics, it allows my own interpretations of those yeah. I think we're quite... to come forth. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. And I, I guess when you were much younger, you must have seen, say, like a lot of neoclassical architecture and all that stuff must be in the back of your head. So I guess, yeah. would you say it's really important then for, let's say, the young artist or the young person who's just starting to get into this, just to try and see as much of the world as they can? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, like I say, a lot of these details and things, you know, very, you know, neoclassical, uh, you can see there's, you know, very strong influences throughout. You also mentioned before that you say you started these things out by sometimes just focusing on a simple door, you'd build yeah. it for the array modifiers, but quite a lot of this is actually quite painter looking as well. So is it a case that you would say just use, say, Blender for some main chunks and then do the rest uh, in 2D, for example, on the uh, outer, outer edges of the frame? Yeah, um, well, well let, let's let's take for instance like the the top left, that yeah. sort of um, greyed out building on the top left, that is pretty pretty much uh, the blender file part of that, um, which is pretty much like a sort of like flat. So that that is very um, painted. Um, yeah. I mean, it all it, it's, it's it's all got a lick of paint. Some less so than other parts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like the uh, the top of that tower, the central tower, for instance. That that uh, there's there's where where there's like a a, a hint of an idea. But maybe, is that a landing pad? Yeah, yeah, oh, just yeah, here yeah, at the very top. Yeah, arch. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And a lot of that tower itself is just painted, but there it is. There is a architectural, and the windows on that tower as well are. It's just to save me the time of, of like lining up perspectives, um, the perspective with this big perspective tool, and what have you. I've yeah. just blocked those two out. Very basic. It's just inset faces. There's no other detail than that. Yeah, and I feel um, that that's yeah. something that's very important as well because I feel that you know these days there's so many 3D tools out there to make things like this easy for artists. Yeah. But it's so much quicker if you have the fundamentals and you have the perspective skill. You can go in there and add these details, and it's easy for you, isn't it? You know, you don't have to struggle yeah. so much. Yeah, so, yeah. again, one of those things for, say, the beginner artist or people breaking is really make sure that you have your perspective down because, um, I mean, I'm sure you, maybe you'll agree with this, but sometimes you have to, you know, make changes very quickly in studio yeah. as a freelancer yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and being able to quickly do that in perspective without having to go back into the 3D program is yeah. really, really important. So, uh, yeah. That's oh, it is indeed, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's move on to the uh, the next one here. So this one is the Edinburgh University. I can't pronounce this. Zeno Botany Department Hot House, eighteen ninety two. I love the I love the name by the way. <laughs> I love the name. Well, just, I don't yeah. know how we come with these names. Uh, what well, does so Zeno meaning alien? Botany, Zeno, yeah, yeah. Botany plants, you know, sorry, <laughs> alien well, plants. Well, well, saying that, I think I can see. I think some like some creatures in the glass on the right hand side it reminds me of uh, like a very old museum. In fact, what what yeah. was the the inspiration for this? I just, I just this was mainly born of a love of just old um, sort of uh, raw iron and cast iron Victoriana, you know, it's like um, I hate <laughs> I hate modernism <laughs> um, I, I, hate, feel, I feel like we've lost we've lost something I, I you know, I, I do appreciate the very clean minimalistic look sometimes but I do yeah. feel that, you know, the Victorians where they added feet and curlicues and all these like details to the furniture. Yeah. I feel like we've lost something al along the way in terms of craftsmanship. Indeed, and, yeah. and you know, an ease of manufacturing. Maybe we should go back to uh, some of these like you know gothic style elements. But no, it's absolutely brilliant. And so, um, other than that, so was this created using the same kind of process? Then would this in entire interior be blocked out in Blender because some of this background? Again, it just looks like uh, maybe just it's a, an, an image, or is it two D painting? So. So which it's, parts of this are 3D? I mean, you can't really tell. It's, it's all it's all 3D, um, mm. but I've Mullins Mullins once said Craig Mullins, the great God Emperor <laughs> Craig Mullins. <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> he once said that um, uh, just just don't have don't have detail everywhere because your eye will be swimming all over the image and it won't be able to settle on a specific part that you want it to do that you want it to settle on. So 
it's an incredibly detailed model throughout, but there are parts of detail in, in the background, particularly the, the sort of hazy, hazy background. Um, say from that, you, you know, from that that guy looking up at the plant. Oh yeah. From yeah. from, from, from that point, from, from that point onwards, from, from, um, receding it in the background, it, it's, it's all just as much detail as in the foreground. But the detail was kind of, it was too noisy. It was too sort of intense, and it it, it was. You, I wanted to guide the eye towards the, uh, the, the group. I'm not sure if I succeeded in that, succeeded in that. But I wanted to more sort of guide the eye towards the group at the bottom. Yeah, and all that detail in the background. The so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was, it was it all pretty much just painted over. There's some reference. It's not even reference images. It's a lot like textures.com images, pasted in just to give it a bit of noise and grizzle. But there's no sort of, oh, I like this photo of a <laughs> xenobotany. That's it. Yeah. I'll paste that in and integrate it into my own. There's none yeah. of that. It's, it's, it's like I might see an image of a, I don't know, like a pl plaster wall. And it's got enough kind of noise and sort of break, break up the the forms but, enough. Yeah, to break up that. Fade that it in very well. softly. Yeah. Fade it in very softly, and then paint over that, and bring bring it, uh, bring to some of the model detail, render detail in a bit more. And then it's a dance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it seems to be a yeah. dance between which areas do you add the detail and the high contrast to, and then which areas do you push back in, into the background. Yeah. Simpl yeah. Simplifying and adding emphasis into those key areas. Indeed, I know you mentioned yeah. Mullins. Yeah, Mullins was a, a massive fan of again going in with brushwork. I mean, I, mean, I think I think almost every single image you made was uh, worked into with a brush. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I mean, th 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 there isn't much in this image that I have not overpainted. So I, I start off with a render, and I do see this in in, in quite a lot of. I don't mean this as a criticism, but it's got an amount of a criticism really. I, I see this on a lot of concept artists, uh, sort of fantastical visualists, when they get their hands on uh, 3D, when they familiarise themselves with 3D, it's, it's they, 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 they seem to sort of forget the painterly aspect of it as well, do you know what it's like? Like, like for, for instance, for instance the, the exhibits in the windows, yeah, yeah. The, the exhibits behind the glass. The, the, sorry, the specimens behind the glass. There's no yeah. 3D there. Do you know what oh, I mean? these, yeah, yeah. Just very yeah. careful. Very, I mean, very like soft edges as well. And it's yeah, quite, it's quite difficult to get these. I mean, I don't. I mean, how are you doing these? Like with a blend or just with brush? How do you do with these? Yeah, it's, it's, just it's, I hardly ever veer. It, oh God, I mean, in the past, people have when, when I've gone to like sort of art conventions or what have you, yeah. um, or meetups. Uh, Often in the past, but the, the, the question was like the, one of the first questions on, particularly on novice artists' lips, was, "Oh, what brushes do you use?" Yeah, it's a classic. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, classic, it's almost yeah. it's almost irrelevant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've got like I've got a, a soft round, hard round, and a couple of like scumbly brushes, scumbly broken up with their spacing and the just and the um, patination is slightly different and. Um, yeah. And I've I've also veered into um, dual brushes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, and, and and mixer brush as well. You can do some pretty. I mean, mixer brush was introduced, you know, quite later on. If you've been using Photoshop for years and years, um, you know, mixer brush when that first came on was quite interesting. We experimented with it. Yeah. But uh, like I say, uh, I mean, you know, sadly, I, I think I fall into the category of uh, the guy who uses, you know, too much 3D in photos and not enough paint over. To be quite honest, so even yeah. for myself, this is, uh, you know, quite interesting to see. But no, that's great. I, yeah. I, 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 I just think sometimes, like the 3D, I mean, this, this is obviously taken from a 3D model. I think, yeah. I think, I, I, but I, I just want, want to sort of, I want it to. I want the fine image to be more a reflection, a more of a reflection of the image that I had in my head. And the image I had in my head wasn't a 3D model. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. it, it, it was more grounded in the real world. Um, I mean, it's fantastical, but it's more grounded in the kind of sort of, I don't know what the term we're looking for. It, it, it wasn't as precise and clean as a 3D render. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah.
and, and, and as, as I was just going back to what I was saying before, I see a lot of, particularly a sort of starter artists are on the first rung of the ladder, as it were, and they discover 3D and they discover they have like an aptitude for 3D and it's oh brilliant, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they knock out a 3D, a 3D render, and there's a bit of bit of paint all over over the top, and they present it as like a kind of, uh, it, it it just sort of. It just doesn't look quite. It looks sort of synthetic. Yeah, I think. You know there's, what I mean? Yeah, there's this fine balance between how much of the image do you paint over, because yeah. if you don't paint over enough, then it's very obviously 3D with paint on top. So you've got to achieve that balance between. Okay, yeah, it does look you know generally like uh, you, you can't really tell, and I feel like with a lot of your work, it does. It, it starts a bit um, you know going to that territory of well, you can't actually tell it's painted over, because well, like, like I, I said, the majority think, of it think... really does feel worked into. Yeah, well, hopefully when we look, um, I don't, I don't blow my own trumpet too much, definitely. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no, no I think now's the time, I think you've got to blow yeah. your trumpet the moment. So. Well, well, also, it's definitely when we, we'll, when we look at my, 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 when we dissect my, my Arcturian artifact image, you'll see where the, where the, where it started from the 3D render and, and where it ended. And hopefully you'll see the, the 3D render, it isn't, oh, I'm, I'm almost there now. The 3D render is a stage. It should, um, I've, I've poured my heart and soul and a lot of time and effort into the 3D part of yeah. that image and, and the hothouse image and what have you. But the, it really comes to life in the paint phase. And it's people can't, well, if I was an art director, say, and I've, I was presented with a 3D render, with a, a little sort of begrudging paint over it, you know. Oh, oh it's meant to be a painting, so I'll paint a bit on, on it as well. If I was presented with that, I, I, I'd, I'd be inclined to reject that candidate for the job, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I because agree. the paint is, I mean, they're, 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 like, both stages are artistic endeavors. Both stages are exploring ideas but the paint phase is where you breathe life and magic, true magic into into the image, if you can, you know? This is the paint, yeah. Don't skimp on the paint phase. The, the paint phase is, is the soul of the image. Yeah. That sounds like... so pretentious, but that's, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think it's absolutely yeah. true. I think as well, when you do add that extra uh, level, you know, that extra level of effort, you, you take something that could have just been, you know, 3D and a photo bash, and you take yeah. it, you push it further, and you do things with lighting and colour that actually you couldn't achieve purely through 3D and photos. There's certain yeah. things that you can see with your eye that you know the 3D engine can't. Yeah. Uh, so I really do think feel that's important. So yeah. um, anyway, so, so just move on to the next one, and just and to say to talk about that um, the colour and light that we we're just talking about, I feel like this is actually a great example because there is so many subtle shifts in mm. hue and color temperature and texture and you know this is something that honestly you really do need to have you know good brush skills and a good eye and all the rest of it for i don't i don't know how hard this would be even be to achieve purely with a 3d maybe you could do it with some kind of you know post effects i don't know but uh you know in terms of color and light and all the rest of it this this image for me when i first saw it i was like wow i was really blown away uh, you know, oh, by the atmosphere you. and the mood. So yeah, I was really like it. And also going back to the, you know, simplifying things again. You know, for people breaking in, uh, if you yeah. just take a look at how those figures have been simplified, it's it's really good. But I'm assuming again the process was something similar. Again, I'm assuming maybe there's a, a some kind of basic 3D block out, and the majority of it was just worked into. Or was this a 2D start at this time? Oh no 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 this. <laughs> This I pulled out all the stops, 3D wise with this one. I, yeah. I, I, I extensive 3D um, exploration here. Even the figures themselves are 3D. Um, had a 3D um, start in life. Um, yeah, they've, they've been pretty much entirely painted over, but I had 3D there, just to, just to have the, the the light just kissing them from the that window on the left. Um, and many things, but I, I, I um, uh, patient observer of like um, the, the subtle kind of 
play of light isn't one of them. No, no, I can't do that. But I wanted the light to exact. I didn't want an approximation of my mind's, my mind's eye yeah. of what I wanted. You know, what I, mean? I, I wanted a, 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 as exact as I could, soft light through that stained glass. And was I, this I, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't trust myself enough to sort of do that, that just off the top of my head. So, so I went with the 3D base for those figures and for yeah. everything. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm guessing in the 3D scene you had maybe uh, some like area lights like shining through, say, a circle to create some shafts of light, or was this just added after the fact? Um, well, yeah, the, the, the light showed the, 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 the soft light. It is, it is a, an approximation in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in Photoshop. The, 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 the bare render was fairly sort of clean and crisp, and I didn't want that. I wanted that sort of dreamlike quality, so yeah, I did yeah. that after the fact in, in, in the paint, basically. Correct. Yeah. And when you go into something like this, I know before you've mentioned, you know, a lot of this stuff is in your head through years and years of experience. So when you went into this image, did you say have some images of say, I don't know, like a, a moodily lit church interior no. or something like that? Was this, again, was it purely from just your imagination? Yeah, I didn't have anything. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, it was, it was, it was, um, it was just a, I, I love Tolkien probably more than my own children. No. <laughs> 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 no, no, <laughs> no. I love, I love. I, I, I just while away a hundred lifetimes painting yeah. images from Tolkien, and that, uh, that, that it's it's no great, it's no great. What's the word? It's no great sort of um, struggle for me to come up with the sort of images in my head. They, they've, they're always there, and they're always saying, "Me next, me next." I'll, I'll, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it's. I don't have to struggle to fo find the image imagery. It's always there. Uh, so my constant companion so yeah no I did, um, I, 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 no reference images needed for this one yeah so along with uh tolkien do you have any other uh, you know kind of favorite books or uh, references or, or things like that you've, you've read over the years that maybe people can check out um for, well for my fantastical stuff uh as i said i could i could, I could happily while away 100 lifetimes painting stuff from tolkien and consider those lives worth well spent um, yeah, yeah. But I could also say like Star Wars. Uh, not so much now, but after a good 25, 30 years, I was like a rabid, frothing at the mouth Star Wars fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Star Wars, Warhammer, 40k. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, think, I, I, could, I think I used to have a, a, a Space Orcs army. Oh, right. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely yeah. familiar with, you know, like. I Agent, started off with Agent Smith. Well and, with Warhammer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Warhammer, with that, uh, uh, Dune, yeah. Frank Herbert's Dune series. I love painting and stuff from that. Yeah. Um, brilliant, brilliant book. The film is great as well that released recently. Yeah, they did a really good job. The original uh, yeah. Dune film is interesting as well. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Well, let's move on to the. Yeah, take a listen, uh, this one. So I know before you mentioned that you do have the uh, the blender scene for this one, but before we pass oh, yeah. over the, the screen to you, do you want to just just give us a quick intro to this? So was this again just uh, a personal piece? Was it something inspired by something you did at work? Um, what was the initial uh, inspiration for this piece, and where did the world come from? My, well, my initial inspiration for this was God. I mean, it was, it was about a year ago I started this. Uh, Finished it rather well. Started and finished. Um, I, I just, I just, I've just got these images in my head. It's like, like they queue up patiently in my head, and it's like me next. Okay, you've waited long enough. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you. Honestly, it's like I, I, I just, I've got like a, a fascination with like Victorian. Yeah, it feels very uh, really steampunk. It yeah, like yeah. Steampunk, you know, some of the technology, and especially this. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. So it looks like some kind of like sea urchin with uh, wires like grotesque, really uh, bizarre looking uh, contraption in the middle. And what is yeah. that thing uh, supposed to do? Are these guys uh, analysing the uh, I don't thing know. in the middle? Really, I really don't know. <laughs> that's it. <It's> just, <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, well, that's, that's, that's a bit coy. No, that's true. No, I, I do know. I do know. I don't, I don't know the, I don't know the finer points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do know that this, that this is certainly some sort of research institute. And yeah. there are a bunch of eggheads and technicians who are analysing the central thing, whatever it is. It's some thing that was brought back from a survey mission. Yeah. 
and they found it like floating in an asteroid belt around this red giant or something like that. And it's like, what the hell is that? Yeah. I don't know. Let's bring it aboard and take it back to the eggheads on Earth. So, and I'm guessing the this secrets. Is, yeah, I'm guessing this is part of the same universe as this because no, before you mentioned this is like an alien uh, xenobotany department. So I'm guessing this is part of all the same universe and time period. It is. It is. I was uh, I, I, for, for for a good few months. There's a couple of other images in there as well. So I suppose that that. Um, Looking down on the um, what was it called, City in the Clouds or whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, that that was sort of. I suppose you could, you could tie that one in with it as well. And there's another of, of like an aquarium with like weird alien fish. Sure, this that one. one I actually was looking at this one before. Yeah, yeah, yeah I really like this one. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're they're all sort of tied together and loosely, just just. By virtue of their, of their aesthetic and time period, really. Yeah. Did I actually, do you know when I, you know when I first saw this? I was actually flipping through this before the, you know, before I started the podcast. Have you ever played the game Bioshock? There's something when I opened this, it reminded me of Bioshock. This no. thing of being underwater, and uh, I mean, obviously, nowhere near as kind of you know, dystopian and destroyed, but it kind of reminded me a bit of that. Uh, no, I've never played world. it, but I have heard many people say draw comparisons with my steampunk stuff. Oh, it's Bioshock. I'll have to take your word for it. I don't know. I've never played it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'd definitely, I'd definitely check it out. Um, yeah, I definitely remember spending mm. quite a few hours, you know, running around Bioshock, uh, you know, taking down Big Daddy's the call, and which is a kind of a guy in a, a, an old style, well, Victorian style diving suit. Diving suit, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like a drill for an arm and, and all this yeah. stuff. And oh, it's really creepy. Anyway. <laughs> I've, 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 I've seen a couple of screenshots and, and yeah. I've done maybe some promotion on that, but I've never actually played it. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, anyway, yeah. So to go back to that, so yeah, I was just going to say, um, like steampunk, a bit grotesque, uh, very interesting um, you know, IP and, th and, and stuff. So uh, I was thinking now maybe we could pass the screen over to you, okay? And if you wanted to just you know, show a little bit of you know behind the scenes process of you know how we create this image and a bit of thinking behind each step. Okay, and so now we're going to go through the Arctone Artifact PSD, where Pete's going to show us through a bit of the back behind the scenes of how this image was made. So Pete, if you just want to walk us through uh, how you created some of this image, maybe the Blender scene, the PSD file, that'd be great. No, no worries. Okay. Um, well, this uh, this image started. Hold on, let me get the um, let me get my pointer up. Okay. That's better. Just for ease of kind of oh, is that like laggy laggy on your end? Yeah, no, that's not too bad actually. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So as, as you can see, this is got its basic base. Um, it's based on a fairly sort of complex three D scene um, with extensive paint over, and I think it might be quite instructive to show how uh, basic at least the lighting was, the initial lighting. For this image, um, it wasn't pretty when it first came out of Blender. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, so let's let's have a look at that now. Yeah. Um, I think it should be down here somewhere. Oh, give me two seconds. Let's have a look. Yeah. The original image. And this goes back to what we were talking about before, where you know you need to go in with your brush and your skills and just work into that light in that initial three D scene. There you go. Look at that. Man, there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of <laughs> assets in there. That was the, oh my god. Oh, there's oh, millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, There's quite a lot of uh, assets and details in that. Man, I wouldn't expect it to be uh, that that much. So, I mean, yeah, how, yeah. I mean, how how big a scene was this? I mean, it must be millions and millions of polys. Oh yeah, it was. It was. But I mean, this. Oh, I'll just move all this rubbish out of the way. Um, it um, it's initially started. I had I had I had. I had um, I had, I had this idea that I was going to. Uh, this was going to be like the sort of three D set, for a sort of short film I was working on, yeah. very very briefly, um, and then I had so many competing ideas in my head saying, "What about me? What, me next?" You know, the, the, the short <laughs> film idea just went out the window. But I thought, well, you can't just waste all that time and effort you put into building the set. You might as well get, get a painting out of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, uh, I thought, well, yeah, I start basically, basically I'm, I'm, the, the purpose of, of me showing this horrible <laughs> render is that you can't ju just have 
a render with a, a few sort of begrudging, you know, brush strokes on it, and then claim it's a painting. Because it's not a painting, really, is and, it? And before you went into this scene, were there some rough sketches, or did you just kind of go into it straight into three D? Like how? No, how... I don't. I don't sketch. I don't. I don't. I used to. I used to be known for like just carrying around a sketchbook with me everywhere. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, here's people. I just, I don't really care how sacrilegious it sounds either. I, I don't really get much out of sketching. Um, <laughs> not, not these days anyway, because I've got yeah. Blender now and I sketch in 3D basically. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so oh, 3D's become yeah. the sketchbook. It's quite interesting because yeah. some people are absolutely fanatical about the, uh, the you know the starting process with like a, a loose sketch. So it's quite interesting to hear that you're the opposite. And I guess actually, if you think in terms of speed, it's actually probably quite quicker to think in terms of a 3D sketchbook and start out yeah, you know, your ideas yeah, purely in 3D. Well. Yeah, yeah, it's much faster. I just, I just, I just don't. It just doesn't. But my ideas flow a lot, lot quicker. If I just knock up a model, um, I just start with a primitive, start with a cube, start with a sphere, whatever, and just work from there. Um, I've got nothing but respect for people who, who um, could just knock out something like this in 2D, you know, and in, in, in the twinkling of an eye, but I, I can't, and I, I, I just find it needlessly laborious and tedious doing it, um, the, yeah. the pencil and paper way, you know. Um, well, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I feel that there's some things which are more suited for drawing in 2D. If you quickly want to get an idea of something in 2D, sometimes it can be quicker. But then, for example, that ceiling, that's, you know, that looks really complicated. And that can be yeah. done quite quickly in 3D, like we all know, with a, a radial array, right, and some shapes. Sure. And you can yeah, come yeah, up with, yeah. like, you know, endless uh, options for that really fast. Indeed, yeah. It's, it's, almost, it's almost impossible to sketch a ceiling like that, like a curved, a curved circle with all intricate detail. Yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking. It's, it's, it's like there are so many sort of intersecting yeah. angles and what have you, and and confluences of angles. I, I just thought it's just a bloody nightmare. I cannot be bothered. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know as, I, as I said, love, I, I take my hat off to people who can do that. Yeah, that's uh, it. And th there was a time when I could do that. Yeah, yeah. But that you know it would be limited to one image and if the client comes along says, oh can we change this can we move that here can we move that there bloody nightmare i can't be bothered with that <laughs> but in it. 3d i can just move all the disparate elements around rearrange it re-render it paint over again do you know what i mean yeah that's um it. Yeah. yeah yeah anyway yeah. um so I've, I've, it might be instructive instructive for me to show some of the sort of little tips and tricks that went into this. Yeah, sure, that'd be great to hear. Yeah, if you want to uh, start off uh, with some of the tips and tricks. Something else I just thought of as well, in a scene which is quite complicated like this, I mean, I'm assuming, but maybe, you know, for the people just getting started, is some of the some of the items uh, in this scene, I'm guessing they're not modeled from scratch, just some of them, uh, say, pre-bought or part of asset, assets you've modeled uh, previously, like for the books, for example. So if you're doing like a client job, would you start off by using uh, some pre-existing assets and then model some stuff yourself, and then you know just see how things go? If you need to add something, you know, by no, hand afterwards. I don't. Or... I don't. I've, I've, I've used like for pre-existing assets. I I feel like a bit of a fraud <laughs> by using pre-existing assets. Um, I'll, I'll reuse some of my own stuff, but I've got that little perfectionist. Um, egomaniac devil on my shoulder saying, or or is it an angel? I'm not sure, but it's on my shoulder <laughs> saying, saying, you didn't model that, you didn't make that, but you're part of go off with your own work, fraud, liar, liar, liar. Oh, so, so, so I, 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 I have to make it all myself pretty much, you know what I mean? That's it. Um, and I think, I think the problem nowadays as well with uh, Turbo Squid and you know, CG Trade and these other websites is. You can you can get a model of just about anything, and you know mm. at least for myself in production, you expect to get things done super quick. So if it's something you know quite common, uh, like, yeah. like a book for example, it kind of expects you to just quickly either grab one or or whatever. Or if you have one that you've made for yourself for a different scene, it kind of just expects you to grab it uh, as quickly as possible. So I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I, do, I, I do I do appreciate the pressures of the artists are under. Yeah, and you know, yeah. I, I'm, but for my own sort of egotistical it, it, it all boils down to ego at the end of the day 
and a certain sense of ownership of, of my work you know what I, mean? I, I just can't I can't my, my 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 conscience won't let me sleep if I use other people's work to populate my scenes do you know what I mean yeah. although having said that um, the woman here the red-headed woman here I was struggling for ages and ages to get her expression right and I did use a turbo squid uh, female head as the over as the under under yeah, model, under paint yeah, for that yeah. you know what I mean yeah. um, but was, but every, every, everything else is is the, the product of my own yeah. um, I, was, I was going to say a lot of this stuff as well you know it's quite designed some of these computers I'm just looking at the far left uh, this machine or this uh, and I you know Victoria, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah, this machine. I'm going to say I don't think it's going to be. Levers. Yeah, I was going to say a, a lot of this stuff is designed, and you know, going back to this idea of having a 3D sketchbook and, and sketching in 3D, this is one of those things where you know, be, you know, being quick in 3D and be able to quickly, you know, bash out ideas in 3D and having that skill yeah. can allow you to design, you know, in a, in a quick way and, and come up incredibly with really complex fantastic. things that, that yeah. can be seen from different angles, different lighting conditions. That would be monumentally challenging to do, do that in 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 in, uh, in the traditional using way. traditional yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so but yeah but, but yeah, just getting back to so, so it started life as this it's that's not a very promising debut is it you know what i mean it's like it's quite raw yeah it's quite raw. it's and very raw and and it's very yeah yeah and it's it's just very sort of raw 3d render it's that's not convincing anybody. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's um, it, yeah. yeah. Um, but what the one, well, there are many things 3D renders can do for you. Um, one of them being, uh, I don't know if I just sort of drag my layers in here. One thing that the 3D render can give you is, and it's right here, and give you a depth mask, depth pass. So with your camera. Uh, when you're setting up your camera in 3D, um, I'll, 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 I might be able to show it here. So I'll switch back to Blender. And I think that's the camera there. Yeah, that's it there. Yeah. You can see this orange line extending. Here's the camera here. Yeah. Here's the camera. And this orange line extending from just about, you know, the the image plane of the camera yeah. to just beyond the Arcturian artifact. That's the Arcturian artifact here. Yeah. All these things. That is your depth past. So it will basically say from this point, oh, let's get it in, in a shot, mm -hmm. in frame. Right. So from this point here to this point here, it'll generate a black and bl black, a uh, grayscale image, black to white. Uh, of the depth that this uh, represents, that this line represents. Yeah. So black from here, uh, fading to white, or, or vice versa. Right. And we use this to get the uh, the lighting effects and the fog effects that we've seen in your work previously. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it basically it basically allows you to um, hardwire in some 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 depth that would be challenging it is it, i mean this more challenging i mean this is challenging to get all, all the this it's not like a sort of one-stop show up all right i've got it now you know i've got the depth yeah. there, there there are places where it's inappropriate to the to the final result i wanted do you know what i mean so it's but, but it it's an incredibly useful guide and it's also if i if i Let's just let's just say right. I'll load this. Okay, and I'll go back to layers. Okay, hide it. I'll create a group, a layer group here, and I'll mask the like, the, the group off. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to. I'll invert that actually. Control I. I'll invert. Could you see there? Yeah, yeah, we can that. see that. Yeah. Okay, so let's just say, actually, I'll, I'll just say, I'll do that again, right? Let's just say I wanted to darken off areas, just parts of this. I wanted to maintain the outline of the Arcturian artifact. 
but I want to dark open the off areas of the, of the background. So what I can do, I can just get to go low. Oh, it's very important that you render these out in 16 bit. Why is it important that to render these out in 16 bit? Is it to okay. stop some of the artifacts and unbanding? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, effect? yeah. It just gives you a much broader range of, 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 of right, I'll, I'll show you. If I, well, I don't have a side by side 8 bit, 16 bit comparison, but basically all this softness here, mm -hmm. it, it gets crunched. If you, right, I'll, I'll, I'll just, just do this, I'll apply. Like just, 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 just a quick warning for the people watching this. This may not work because of the way we're recording it, but I do know that there are examples that you can find online if you want to compare 16 bit and 8 bit. You, you might actually see it on, on the video. You might see some banding. So what Peter's trying to get at is, is the uh, the quality that's lost where the light and the dark meets. You start to get some artifacting and some almost like pixelation. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll zoom in in a nice soft bit. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's just say okay. here. It, 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 let's say this, this general area. If there's some nice sort of light fall off there. Okay, very gradual light fall off. Look like here. Um, if if I was doing if I was using an eight bit image um, render output, and I wanted to. Um, crunch these images more. You get terrible banding. You know what banding is? It's like the sort of onion layers, onion skin, yeah, yeah. onion layers. You know, along here, along here, it'd be like banded. Um, it's, it, I mean, it's every ever so slightly, but it, it's neg it's negligible. Yeah, yeah. So I would just sort of crunch those, and the, and the great thing, one of one of the great things about um, uh, outputting uh, uh, a mist pass in, in Blender, it's called a mist pass. Yeah. One of the great things about that is it just automatically gives you the, these very sharp, clean outlines. You see here where my mouse is. Yeah. Look at that pillar, the outline of that pillar. Um. And 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 this lamp post, th this lampshade here. Uh, so rather than sort of painstakingly go around with the lasso tool or the what have you. Yeah. You can just sort of generate one. Uh, say, if, say, if, like, like, say, if I wanted to isolate this lamppost, this lamp, I keep calling it that. <laughs> lampshade, I don't know what you mean. These yeah. lampshades, do you know what I mean? I'll yeah. just crunch it some more. You know, if I really, if I'm lazy, I can't be bothered to sort of, um, can't be bothered doing it by eye. I'll just sort of crunch it some more. Bang, bang, bang. There you go. You know? And you've already got a, uh, a quick way just to select that now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. select it, or sorry, I'll just. And also, does this that, tie in? So when you yeah. go to finally export your image, does that mean you're exporting in sixteen bit as well? How how do you go about making sure that image quality stays true all the way to say upload into ArtStation? Do you oh. upload a higher res? Like how do you make sure you don't get any of that banding or artifacting? I, well, I think I think <clears throat> for, 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 from from my limited experience uh, of doing such things, so long as the process the process that went into making the final image doesn't have banding in it, the final image won't. You see what I'm saying? It's like yeah, yeah. If, if 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 the ingredients you put into the image aren't banded and artifacts everywhere, broken, yeah. aren't broken. Yeah, the final image won't be whether whether it's eight bit or sixteen bit. Yeah. And I just just upload down a nice high res version of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah um, there is some uh, thing about JPEGs as well. I uh, know you've got to be careful with JPEGs because sometimes with uh, say yeah, JPEGs, you've got to check that quality when you export it because you can get some artifacting and there is some compression. And then when yeah, you upload yeah. it once again, I know ArtStation is quite good for the quality, uh, but I know if you do upload it to social media, there's even further compression on top of that. So yeah. making sure that those images that you export out of Photoshop, you know, they don't have any banding, that the quality is as high as it can be. Because yeah. as I said, you want your own images to look as good as it possibly can be when you advertise yourself, your portfolio and all the rest on social media. Indeed. Uh, yeah. 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 That's really interesting. I'm guessing the, these mispasses and all this kind of stuff was really important for your matte painting work. So I read on the, on your background that you, you do have experience in matte painting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The, 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 the modelers, the modelers would output um 
loads of different passes for you, for you to pick and choose that, like this is appropriate here this isn't here um whatever you, you just have to pick and choose you might have a specular pass or whatever you know they they well on, on a big on a big sort of production budget um show like world war z or i didn't actually do matt painting or world War Z. it was just uh john carter um, yeah. I worked on World War Z, but not in the, not in the map painting department. You're, you're on texturing, right, for World War Z? Yeah, yeah. I did, I did some map painting for Carter. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. They they they'd output loads of different passes. One they they they, they, they would output would be the um, tag ID pass, which I was about to bring up now. So the tag IDs. Yeah, absolutely invaluable to get those selections. I mean, yeah, it takes exactly. forever. I don't know what people did before. <laughs> before yeah. the, the tag ID or, or clown pass, it's sometimes called as well. Clown? Yeah, clown pass. I've heard it called clown pass ID pass. Oh. C- colour ID pass. It goes by different names, but they're. Oh, uh, okay. I've never uh, heard the clown pass. Yeah, well, I think it's. I think it might be Keyshot that calls it clown pass. But anyway, it's, it's called yeah. by different things, but it's, they all essentially do the same thing, but they're absolutely invaluable. So um, basically, basically this, this allows you just to do for people who have never come across this before um i've rendered out i just changed the materials to um i'm not i'm sure there are other ways of doing it but yeah. I, I weren't the sort of dummy i don't really know what i'm doing way of doing it <laughs> so that i just changed the materials to emission materials and, and an emission material um it doesn't it doesn't um interact with the lights in the scene it it does it, it emits its own light, and so basically the outputted render allows you to. I'll, I'll just select here with the lasso tool on this, on this uh, sort of peachy, pink coloured bit here. Oh, yeah. Just select a bit, and then you can go to select similar. Ding ding ding, and it selected all of it, and then you can just do select save selection. I don't know. Uh, Call it walls, whatever you know. And so, rather than, as I say, sort of painstakingly going through with the lasso tool, oh, I missed a bit there, what have you? It, it just gets it all. Yeah. You might have some slight artifacting, as you can see around this chair. There's a similar colour there, but that's negligible. Um, bother to just go in and paint that out. And you feel you have to be more yeah. careful when you're doing, say, map painting for film. Because with this, yeah, you tend yeah, to spend a yeah. lot of time, obviously, going in with a, a brush and painting into a lot of stuff. But I'm guessing when you're doing the map paintings, you have to be really careful of, of little artifacts like that in the photo work and, and the last because it's going to be seen yeah, on the yeah. big screen, right? Uh, yeah. And I think as well, just for, uh, for people who are curious, who, who do know about the clown passes, sometimes you can save yourself a little bit of time by uh, using a couple of different types of ID pass. So you can use a material ID pass and an, yeah. uh, an object ID pass. Now, the object ID pass will combine uh, some different elements in your scene, but sometimes that can actually save you a bit of time because it'll group things that you want to grouping anyway, for example, so like the, the right. pillars and the ceiling. So by you know using a couple of different ID passes, you can actually save yourself a little bit of time. It doesn't take that much time just to quickly switch between the two either. I've, 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 seen, I've seen the object ID pass in the render um, options. I've never actually... I've always ticked it. I've always just got a sort of black image. So, what, what do you sort of group your objects together into? Well, sort of, is, yeah, well, this is it. Uh, so, okay. so, I mean, well, here's the thing. So, this is uh, in Modo, uh, which is the preferred software I use. I've used Blender quite a bit. I actually started using Blender a couple of years ago, and I use it on and off. But yeah. uh, Modo is my, my uh, you know, my go to one, and, uh, with Octane as well. And so, you have two options. So, you've got the material ID pass and the OBJ, or object ID pass. And very often, you'll have similar objects in your scene which you would want lassoing anyway and right, so right. by rendering out both those color id passes like i said it doesn't take too much time you can uh, you know you can save a bit of time on creating selections um, oh interesting yeah but anyway but to go back to that scene i noticed before that you'd actually modeled out the entire shot behind what we currently see on camera as well and is that uh, is that standard do you like to block out the entire room if you do create an image or was that just for this particular image that you did that for oh hold on was that um so we can see all the right. detail behind the camera as well so you didn't just create just what's oh no the, no the no shot. no so the entire building is uh, no, oh i no. see it's it's an hdra image <laughs> oh, right. oh, I was gonna say. Right. yeah oh, right, okay. yeah, but, yeah I'm, I'm fairly new to the 
I've, I've only been using HDRIs for like a couple of years now. Yeah. And before it was like it was just sort of I had more likes than B and Q or from <laughs> American listeners like Target. You know, I was like, I just, there's just lights everywhere. I was like, oh, oh, that that light isn't that area isn't very well lit and what have you. And started using Blender. I found out about H2. I've, they're, they're always in the back of my conscience is consciousness. It was like, what are these bloody things? And, and <laughs> pe people would talk about HDRI. I just sort of nod along, like, oh, yeah, yeah, HDRI, yeah, yeah sure, HDRI. Yeah. I didn't know what the hell I was, they were talking about. Um, but uh, fairly, fairly shameful admission for me there. <laughs> well, well, actually, well, actually you know, when I first started, you know, the, uh, you know, like the, the HDRI at night or like inside a factory, it's got these crazy colors on them. I always thought, oh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll never use those. But actually, yeah. I had a gig where I wanted something to look a little bit, you know, sci-fi sci whatever. So I just threw one of these, I think it was like the interior of a factory. It had all kinds of crazy colours in there, you know, purples, oranges, this, that. And yeah, I, just, yeah. I just threw it in there to see what it looks like. And it gave me all these really nice, you know, uh, 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 purple bounce lights and like orange, yeah. oh, orange God, highlights yeah. everywhere. I was like, oh, well, that actually looks pretty cool. So sometimes yeah. experimenting with those HDRIs can give you nice effects. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these these days, these days, I'm really, I really only just... <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much. If I've got lights here, like this. I've, I've done, you know, but there is that one up there. Um, it, it's not sun, but if that wherever that one is up there. But it's just for sort of accents of light. It's not for they're, they're not the they're, they're sort of st scene stealing lights, as it were. Do you know what I mean? Um, so would you set this up as if you were shooting a film then with all these different kind of um, you know fill lights and, and spotlights yeah. and this and the other so um, and would you even add like coloured light on top of that or so what, do you want to talk about the lighting setup actually maybe we could just quickly talk about that because I can see uh, there's some point lights like so you've, you've lit the uh, the lamps and I can see like you said there's a strong overhead yeah. light yeah um, yeah yeah but like, as, as I said it's like the the, the, the HDRI uh, map light is is doing most most of the work in this image really um and most in, and in most of, of my uh recent output it's like I'd, i used to agonize over oh god that that um shadow isn't quite how i would but now i just i, I, I just sort of trust the I, I trust the sort of what i'm looking for i trust i, I trust in the, in the sort of happy happy accidents that happen when you use a sort of realistic HDRI image. Do you know what yeah, I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, I, would, well, I wouldn't have actually lit it that way, but it seems to me more reflective of the reality I want to convey. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes, actually, you know, just to go on, on, on that point you just made, sometimes the 3D rendering engine will add bounce lights to areas that actually you would forget about. So yeah, you'll, yeah. You'll, uh, you'll, you know, you'll set a light up, you'll, you'll get some light through the, coming through the window and that'll throw a bounce light up a wall or at an angle that you wouldn't have actually thought it would have hit. Yeah. And, you know, you can choose to, you know, keep that or, or subdue it or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think it's an inter interesting point to make that the HDRI can uh, add another level of detail to your work. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm often, here, here it is with the HDRI on it. And it, it it just sort of it, my attention span isn't the best, basically. So <laughs> especially for I get bored easily, and so when I'm working on a complex image like this, I'm no, I'm no, I'm up against the clock. I, I know that eventually my interest in it will wane, yeah. and I'll yeah. be like, oh for God's sake, oh, oh this yeah. is blo bloody, oh, I suppose I've got to finish it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. Yeah. I, the, the the sooner I can finish it and move on to the next thing, the better, because I know that the quality will suffer. So if I can cut out one part that I, I do kind of find a bit tedious, being just the overall fill lighting of the thing, do you know what I mean? Just the base base coat colouring, you might call it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So so sorry, sorry, base coat lighting. So I mean that base coat gave me. That base coat gave me gave me that, and that is. I hope to think. I like to think that base coat is fairly fairly far removed from the final image. Do you know what I mean? But it 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 was enough 
to, 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 for, for me to sort of hang my own lighting on top of. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see where you're going with that. And the other yeah. thing you mentioned as well was the speed and the time. And you feel like, okay, I need to get this image, you know, out and into the next stage. And that's obviously quite important when it comes to your freelance and your studio work. Yeah. Yeah. So once you've got this base lighting out of the engine, you're like, right, you know, the client needs it, or even just for yourself, you put yourself under a time pressure or you've got a deadline yeah. coming. So what would, what would the next step be after you've got that base render with the HDR lighting? What, what would the next step be after that? I'm assuming texturing of some kind. Yeah, uh, well, no, well, I mean, well, none, none, of these, none of these models are textured. They're they've got materials to distinguish one from another. Yeah. But they're not, they're, there's no texturing in here at all. There's no, I, I don't even think any of these models are, are mapped. Um, it, yeah, that, that's that, that's an extra level of that's an extra layer of complexity that isn't really necessary for these sorts of images, and it, in, in my view, anyway. Yeah. So um, the texture would mostly be done uh, with with photos and by, uh, with the brush with your own hand in Photoshop afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I might. I, I mean, for this Arcturian, for the for the artifact itself, um, I'm not sure, even sure if any of it's here in this PSD file. Uh, that's about that probably probably been near the bottom. Uh, I don't know. Ah, well, uh, here's an example of. Hold on. Here's an example of. I don't actually know what it is. Let's find out. Drag it to the top. Change that to normal. Right. Okay. Yeah. Here's an example. There's a wood texture. Just a standard wood texture that I got off textures.com. Yeah, yeah. And it's just enough. It's just enough to give me some some tooth, some bite, in the in in the in the the shelves here. You can hardly see it. It's, it's, it's been largely painted over. But for, for again, just to save me some time, pro probably did. I can't really, actually remember what it, I exactly did. But what, what I probably would have done is use the lasso tool, select that, and do select similar. So that's all the, all the, um, that sort of wooden panelling. Yeah, saving yourself hours of work with that uh, ID pass as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll create a new group. I hardly ever name, name them. I can, I, I can see by the wood, let's just call it wood panelling anyway. Uh, panel, panelling. <laughs> panelling, we'll get there, it's okay. Uh, Wood panel. It's, it's quite late, by the way. So uh, you know, <laughs> I think after you're working all day, you know, <laughs> panels, <laughs> okay. um, yeah. I, I guess it is good practice and name everything. But it is, yeah. Over, over, over time, <laughs> yeah, you, no, get no, busy. No, you get busy, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, yeah. I just mean over time. You, you can see oh, yeah. what it is that just from the mask alone. You can, yeah. you can see, oh, that's the wood panels. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you don't need to. You can really can just tell by the thumbnail. I can tell what it is by the thumbnail. Exactly. Yeah. This is um, so I'll, I'll just just drag that in there. That's sort of normal. Looks a bit weird. So I'll I'll put it on a multiply. Say yeah, that looks a bit weird. Or a soft light or wherever it is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it it looks a bit synthetic. So I'll paint over that. Do you know what I mean? Um, and the shadows might be a bit weird. So what I might, what I might do is I might make another make a copy let's say red green which will be best let's say, let's say the blue okay mm -hmm. so i'll drag i'll make a copy of the blue um channel i'll go image adjust levels let's just say levels or curves most of my work is with curves but levels is handy for Let's just say change the curves, sort of crunch it a bit. And so at the moment, you're trying to pick out a part of the texture that you want to keep or get rid of, or no, 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 some, some, something other than that. So I'll, I'll right, I'll just show you. So I'll load selection again. This new one. I'll, 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 let's call it. I don't know. Um, shadows. Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure I'm explaining this in the best way. Okay, so I'm just. Uh, no, right, right. Here we go. Um, and what I might want to do is, I'll create a, a group inside that again. Put the shadows on it. 
All right, let's just change this back to normal. Okay, so it's normal. Uh, da, 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 yeah, oh, I'll try to get up above this one. Okay, so it looks a bit weird. It looks a bit synthetic um, and not at all convincing. But with this newly generated shadow thing that I took, took from the raw render, I'm sure other people will do this differently, but what I might do is just sort of drop a curves modifier in there. Yeah. Okay, and just sort of bring it up a bit. Just, you know, you sort of... Yeah, we can see the... Just play around with the levels and whatever you hear, the curves rather. Just to give you a better basis for your paint over, you know what I mean? And, and another another thing you might want to do is you might to, to add to that you might want to add the this is so so multi-purpose it will more kind of to add the depth to it as well so that rather than have like the raw um sort of day glow fresh out of the box wood texture you might want to fade it a bit yeah yeah so i'll add i'll load up the depth pass and and mask it with the depth pass okay so now it's very faint see just sort of turn it on and off it's very faint um i'll, I'll just get rid of the whole thing very rendery it's starting to get a bit, a bit more paintery just add all these make use of all of these um render output things you can like the tag ids like the the um the depth pass without the depth pass it's sort of it's just sort of flat everywhere it's the same hold on i'll zoom out a bit yeah it's, almost it's like the same the... it's the same values everywhere do you know what i mean yeah i was going to say the depth pass it's almost given it a, a level of ambient occlusion or shadows yeah. or yeah, yeah 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 but it's also it's also just sort of fades into um the bounce light in the background is sort of it's 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 fading off into almost sort of yeah it's it, I, find, I find it hard to put into words but i'm trying to articulate here yeah well, yeah, but, we can, yeah we can see the here uh we can see on the screen in a minute what the kind of effects it's having so it's it's fading the texture off as it receives into the background but it's also allowing some of those ambient occlusion shadows to come yeah. through as well and on top yeah. of that using the blue mask that i just created by uh, going into the channels section and crunching yeah. those values down he's managed to pick out uh, some of those details and things just allow that texture just to seamlessly blend into the model and it's just yeah. probably you know it's uh, I, mean, I mean it takes ages and ages to uv this stuff so yeah it's actually yeah. quite quick just to go in there with this process with the yeah. uh, photo textures of the wood and add it in using this method and i'm yeah. guessing that you, you use this uh, same or a similar process uh, for all the main props in the scene is that right yeah, pretty much. Like, like, like this thing here, um, this sort of central um, brass, I don't know what it is, but a measuring tool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a Victorian contraption of, uh, of some kind, so. Of unknown, <laughs> of unknown origin. Yeah, 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 I don't know. Um, it does something. It looks like it does something. That's enough for me. You know? Like an old sea um, mine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so for that, I might sort of. Let's just bring up the original, the, the, the finished image. I'll just, let's just zoom in a bit, more than a bit. Um, yeah. So you can see my brush strokes all over it, but underneath there might be a metal texture. It doesn't even have to be a metal texture. It's just some, something to give it a bit of grizzle and noise mm -hmm. to just break up the, break up the, the sort of cleanliness of the render. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. And so after yeah. you've added the textures in the, in the photo stage, so you've gone, you've gone over the entire scene, you've added in your photo textures, you've blended them in using uh, the process that you've just shown, and then I'm guessing you go in uh, with a brush uh, towards the end. So roughly, how, how long does it take you to, say, go over a scene once you've been through this process from, say, the render to the photo textures and then take it to this finish is it one or two days is it longer does it depend on the complexity of the image yeah well it, it depends on the complexity of the image it depends yeah. it, it it also i th think uh, well i don't think i know through a bitter experience it depends on the 
on how many, how many sort of tips and tricks you've amassed over the years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm always learning. Oh God, yeah, of course. Why don't I think of that before? Um, techniques, time-saving techniques yeah, yeah. that you like the day before you will have been sort of laboriously painstaking oh, the, oh that's not quite right oh, oh I hate God, that. Yeah. Again. when you, when you learn a new, I mean? new tip and it saves you hours and you're like oh I've been doing it for ages this way and it's like one yeah. button it's one button and it does something for you oh yeah, yeah. so frustrating it, so frustrating isn't it? I know exactly yeah. what you mean it's, yeah. it's, it's one button or it's one combination of um, try this adjustment layer <laughs> or whatever it's oh, but, I've seen it there for years and years. Yeah. I, I, never, I never thought to use it. Do you know what I mean? It. And it solves the problem. I mean, like, like, like for, for for me, it's like curves, adjustment layer curves, are my north and south. You know, I've been nothing without curves. They give you a layer. They give you a level of complex. They give you a level of a, a, a layer, a level of complex. Um, value, uh, value control, changing, yeah, yeah. Uh, value control. Yeah, yeah. that 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 levels can't, that brightness and contrast can't, that exposure can't. Do you know what I mean? This is it. You, you can go it, in and tweak the reds, the blues. Do you know what I mean? This is it. Um, I think it also allows you to uh, shift the values to such a close range that you get really, really subtle changes in value. Oh God, absolutely. Which is, absolutely, which yeah, is yeah. really important. I mean, I see it in your work. A lot of uh, areas have been uh, simplified where the value range in the background in some of these images is very subtle. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, actually, just to go back to something that we're talking about at the very beginning of the podcast is simplification. And you mentioned, uh, you know, masters like uh, Mullins and, uh, and other people, uh, you know, you use similar principles so at this stage yeah. in the painting where you're going in there with a brush and you're making these decisions about what to simplify and what to add emphasis to is, yeah. is, there, anything, is there anything you like to keep in mind as you're doing that or is it just a very natural way of okay well this this part needs more detail this needs pushing further into the back into the background is there any kind of like process or, uh, or, or uh, ideas that you can share about how to do that i think i think I think it's just it's all the all the all the sort of various elements that if they they're like a choir, you know what I mean? And and you can't if you want a sort of melodic melodious image, you, 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 no one part can have prominence. I find um, I find that with my own work anyway. I don't know. I don't I don't want one part of the image. Or one sort of value range, or one to steal the show, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I want them all to have their sort of. I think. I, I, oh God, it's that. It's, it's it's a really good question, and and it's one that I don't. I think after a lot of, after enough years under your belt doing this. You don't question it anymore. It just become you, you just sort of intuit it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because intuitive um, part of, of your process of, of what needs more attention. What needs more? But, yeah, yeah, push that bit attention. back. That that bit is a bit too loud. That bit's a bit too insistent. That you look at it, and um, you just sort of I think I think you just end, ended up sort of intuiting it. Really, as I said, yeah. I'm sure that that's not the the answer uh, our, our listeners want. But it's like. All right, I've, I've, right. I'll give you a, lo a little example. Okay, so a lot of it comes down to for for, to, uh, for me to judicious highlights. Okay, so let's have a look at the raw image. Okay, now look at the finished image. Okay, so. So here, for instance, so, so, so this, this, can you see my cursor? Yeah, yeah, you can see just in the background there, above the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing, it's like a lamp or something. It's not, I don't even know what it is. I don't care to know. It looks good. <laughs> it looks good, kid. It stays in the picture. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> basically, this thing here, the raw render, I, I just thought, it's, it, it, I wanted to I wanted it to have a little more prominence, so I, I just sort of gave it these highlights, 
So there's a few highlights. I have to change the material. A few. Let's have a look at the raw render. Yeah, I didn't. Those highlights were too smooth. It looked too synthetic. So I just sort of scumbled it a bit. You know what I mean? Gave gave it a bit of manufacturer's instruction there. Um, yeah. Let me see uh, the the books. The books on the shelves were actually textures.com. It's just an amazing resource. Um, they've got spines of books. <laughs> they've got a section on textures.com of spines of books packed together in rows. Yeah. So I, I couldn't be bothered painting it all. They're sort, a, sort of laborious. And for the people that can't quite see this on the video, there's the, the old the old style leather bound books where they've got the kind of inlaid detail. I'm assuming that's what it is. Like, I mean, I can kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm zooming in here. I've, I've, I've just modeled these rectangles. Uh, I've just packed together in seemingly sort of random ways for the shelves. I'm, I'm, I can be quite anally retentive in my needless detail anyway <laughs> <laughs> um i thought oh god i'm, I'm not going to paint all this i just went on textures.com amazing resource they, they've got they've got free they've got free um monthly downloads but i have heartily recommend um they they've got like a sort of 5000 credit package uh, which is like 100 100 and 20 quid or something like that quite very very cheap you know but well worth it though well worth absolutely it. If, if you're, well only, worth if you're it, only gigging you need uh, the, the, i mean oh, i mean the, high resolution the door, the, quality yeah, images you know? the, the door the door of a temple i mean you can't just quickly nip out and <laughs> yeah, a yeah, picture yeah, of that you know yeah. what i'm saying you can't yeah, just quickly yeah. nip out to your, you know your local ancient temple and snap a picture of the you know the handle or whatever exactly, so exactly, um yeah. yeah so it's great for stuff like that yeah so and i mean yeah it's great uh, but, but, yeah, but, i mean i mean here's here's another example okay I mean, I spent ages and ages like modeling this thing here. When it, when it came to it in the final image, it, it was too it was too noisy. It was too prominent. I, I'm quite I mean, I'm quite proud of the, the model for, you know, it looks quite original, I suppose. I don't know, hopefully. But all these spikes yeah, coming absolutely. off it, they were, they, they were drawing their eye away from other places. So yeah, so I pushed it back tonally. I tonally pushed it back. I scumbled out some of the detail. It, it, you know, you might see that as sort of counterintuitive. Why did you make all that detail only to brush it out in the end? Because it wasn't appropriate. You know what I mean? Yeah, and some of those details, again, uh, it probably comes with experience, right? I mean, when you first start out, you might end up actually spending uh, too much time in areas which you know, in the end, are going to be either being shadow or pushed out into fog. And I guess yeah. when you've been doing it for many years, you, you end up, you know, doing this stuff naturally. Where you say to yourself in the back of your head, "Well, I know all this back here is probably going to be fog anyway, so I don't need to spend a ton of time." Whereas the sea mine in that scene, you know, it's got probably the most amount of small details. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I mean, there's all these like tiny little uh, like, like rods and sensors and, and wires and nuts and bolts and all this tiny little. I stuff. mean, there's, yeah. there's 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 um there's uh, mechanical there's like engineer's tools in here that I've modelled. I, yeah. I just, like I said, I, I'm incredibly anally retentive about, I must be on the spectrum, I'm sure I'm on some spectrum or other. <laughs> well, that actually, I think, uh, well, actually, no, <laughs> say, no saying that because, uh, you know, I know in film directors and things, you know, they're going about like storytelling, right? And how important yeah. it is uh, to include these things to, you know, to, to sell the story and to sell the, uh, the story of, of the scene and the characters and the people who, you know, we're inspecting yeah. this equipment, so you know, you, uh, you know, somebody would have the coffee cup on the side. Uh, you know, the equipment wouldn't just be kind of like opened and out on, on the side to use, and there would be like a couple of people having a chat, and all these things add, uh, you know, a level of life and detail yeah. to. I mean, to this yeah. work and, the, and these images, uh, you know, that feel believable. You know? Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah. I think it's really good. Um, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I, th I think, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm aware that th this is just, just a vanity project for my own, uh, I don't know, um, for my own pleasure, really. So I could, I could, I could spend as much time as I wanted on it. But um, I'd, I'd, I think for your person, I, I will say for you, if you want to bag a client, um, 
putting all this work into putting all this painstaking detail into your personal work I think is a, a good idea I, yeah um, actually this at least be, yeah I was, I was just about to say this this would actually be a great uh, time or segue just to go into uh, one of the questions that we uh, started with which is for somebody who is starting in the industry now like we, we have all this software and tools available to us you know we've got blender we've got all these things but we've mentioned quite a few other skills that's needed so it would be useful for someone to have the perspective down to be able to paint to understand how to push things back into uh back you know in, into the background so we've got less detail how mm. to add emphasis so we've mentioned all these things but is there anything else that you would look uh, you know, that you would look for in someone's portfolio or even just how they are as a professional like what advice would you give I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd say flair, just flair for it, 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 technical flair is. I'd say technical flair is common, uh, and it's wanted. It's very very welcome. You know, if you know your way around the packages and whatever you and all, all the bells and whistles and the, you know, um, if you're not daunted by the software, that's wonderful. Yeah, and that that's speaks very highly of your of your application that that, that, that that's you know that's that's very uh, commendable and uh, <clears throat> and wanted but i'd say just a, a, a originality really yeah. originality is 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 rarer still yeah. is strong, is, a, is strong a, design strong design yeah. i um not 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 relying on the on what's come before not relying not just channeling what's currently popular don't just do stuff that you think will right i've i've, I've sat i've sat with art directors i'm not going to say who because i don't, don't want to get them in hot water <laughs> but i've sat with our art directors i've sat with our directors looking through portfolios and they're just sort of sighing, going, "Oh God, here's another one." You know, I, I've I've got a pile on my desk. He's got a pile on his. Oh, Pete, have a look at this one. What do you think? And I'd say, like, yeah, it's it's great. And or, or he he just basically coined this phrase. He said, "All this pile, they're just photocopies of photocopies." Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think it's really sad to, to, to see loads of artists out there. They think they, they think that art directors. I can't speak for all their art directors, but the prominent art directors I've worked with. They want technical flair, which is wonderful. You know what I mean. But they also yeah. want original thought. They don't want you to just sort of, sort of see the a game that is popular and make a sort of character in that sort of vein. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They want new ideas. If 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 you, you can generate new ideas. Uh, sort of breathtaking originality. I'm sure that, that you can take a brief that is sort of, you know, um, similar to a, a, a similar a, 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 another AAA game out there. The aesthetic is similar to another AAA game out there. I'm sure if you, you can come up with your own amazing ideas, you can channel someone else's ideas. Essentially, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you can see, what I'm trying to say it's, it's like it's like he was sighing because the art that was landing on his desk was uh was sort of game art yeah yeah it, feels, it feels very familiar to what's yeah. already out there in the market and yeah exactly back to yeah, what yeah. you said before you know why not say for example take a look at the talking universe there's no imagery associated with you know the words on the page so, oh, that, oh, that, well, 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 there's loads of imagery associated with words on the page, but again, again. But your take, that, your take no, on no, the talking world is yeah, entirely but again, wrong, right? Again, 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 it's like the, 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 the imagery that is associated with Tolkien these days is based on the movies. That's true, you know I mean? yeah, like, yeah, so, so the most recent own, Lord of the Rings is probably yeah, what pops up into everybody's mind, yeah, right? Come up with your own interpretations. Yeah. But yeah. Artworks are crying out for original, originality, it's like... Yeah. Or at least the ones I've worked with. It's like, give me your take on Tolkien. Give me your take on Bloody steampunk, yeah. or, it, yeah, or or whatever. Right, Resident Evil. Say, you know, just you, your own take on that. Your own take yeah. on this sort of, you know, g 
game universe or whatever you. Um, like a, a give us an original Resident take. Evil, a Tolkien Resident Evil would be quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 or, or mash up, yeah, whatever, yeah. Just crazy, yeah. No. Zombie Hobbits or something, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just so that we're not, we're not sort of, we're not sort of, you know, to, uh, uh, my mate. I'm, I'm not going to name him. <laughs> but he's a, he was art director of a triple A game, a triple A game that took the world by storm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And we were sat together looking at people's so, uh, photocopy of a photocopy, and there's a sort of phrase that, that stuck with me through the years of like, I, I see a lot of it from talented people, but they. I think that they think art directors want to see game, sort of derivative game style art, and they don't necessarily. A lot of them want to see the product of your own imagination, not someone else's. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so true. Anyway, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And that, that being said, so, uh, so I mean, you, thanks again for um, sharing your process. So I know we're, we're uh, coming to the, about the hour mark now. So just to wrap up that, so I know we've just spoken really quickly about uh, you know game films and originality, but what are some of your like favourite films and games that you've uh, seen or played recently? Um, yeah, as I say, I'm, a, I'm a massive. I've, I've got sort of, I say, I've got sort of five or six, maybe not even that sort of game series that I'm sort of oh the new ones coming out. Um, those are ones that those being. Uh, the Total War series from Creative Assembly. They're oh, sort of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get, oh, God. Oh, I bl- oh, you, take, uh, you take control of an entire army, right? And you, you yeah. Kind of str- and, strategically and, uh, and an empire. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know. So, yeah. so if you've got like your sort of battle map where your armies fight, and even that's optional, but it's yeah. a sort of resource management. You've got an empire to manage as well, overlaid empire uh, management part of that game as well. Yeah, I love. Very- uh, yeah, I love I love the Resident Evil games. I love classic, absolute classic. Yeah, God, they're brilliant. I love um, the GTA games. Mm. Uh, what else? Oh God, I don't play many games these days. I'm too busy. Too, too, busy, too busy working. Too, 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 too busy working on them, which sadly is, uh, which, is <laughs> which is what you know what a lot of people say. You know, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. quite good. Awesome. Right, I've got one last question for you. Um, it's a bit of a daft one, but I hope you're ready. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so if you could teleport back in time and live in any historical period, what period would that be and why? Um, that would probably be uh, pre-Roman Britain. Pre-Roman Britain? Why is that? Why, why pre-Roman Britain? There, there wasn't, uh, much, well, there wasn't much electricity and probably a lot of uh, disease and death, I imagine. I, I don't know. Well, well, that's what we've been told. I'd, I'd, I'd like <laughs> to see from our from our eyes the, 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 the historical inaccuracies. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated with um, pre-Roman, pre-Christian societies and how... Because I think, like the we 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 our world is so uh, for, for 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 better and for worse uh, shaped by um, our sort of Christian faith of the people in charge. I just think it'd be fascinating to, to visit a time before that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've actually read something that uh, all the you know like uh, Saint Anthony and, and Saint Peter and all this lot were actually names given. Uh, yeah, yeah. Over yeah. the top of pagan deities. Yeah when, Christi- yeah. when Christianity came over, I mean, originally, I mean, um, I'm sure there's somebody out there listening to this. Well, oh, actually, no, you're wrong. It's because of this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. So when uh, Christianity came over, the uh, all the pagan uh, gods and things that had yeah, place yeah. already, they renamed them. And, same, same, uh, same, same. Saint Bridget in Ireland was is, was originally just Brid Bridget with a D. Bridget, Bridget yeah, Irish yeah. Irish deity. Yeah. She was transformed into a well. She she was sort of moulded into a more into a more uh, palatable saint, but for the Christian, um, um, what's the word? For the priests evangelizing Christianity mm-hmm. to the pagans, they they sort of met, metamorph. She she basically metamorphosed into a saint. She became Saint Bridget with a T or or, or a D, you know. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think it'd be fascinating to, to, to see their culture. Yeah, I, I do wonder actually uh, how many, um, you know, uh, rituals or um, 
or, or things that have just been abandoned, you know, for yeah. that, that pagan period because of uh, you know you know when Christians came over and you know put imposed this way. Uh, I just wonder if you know how different would things that w- uh, would have been <laughs> over yeah, yeah. if if that never have happened. Uh, maybe yeah. we could make I tell you what maybe we could make uh, you know a series of artworks based on that. What would what would uh, what would England look like mm-hmm. if uh, you know if if paganism carried on? We kept those same you know rituals and or maybe just yeah. make up the rituals as part of a fantasy series. Could be fascinating. Um, yeah, could be quite interesting. Yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> bit, bit of, a, a bit of, I don't know what people are going to think when they listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's just, it's just we're, 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 we're sold this image for like deprivation and hardship and toil and human sacrifice and the, the, we're all mad and we're always fighting each other, the constant war. But I'd, yeah. the more I read about it, the more I'm thinking, I, I, I just think the conquerors, the Christian conquerors, uh, you know, history is written by the victors. I think, I think they probably they'd be probably keen to give the pagans a, a bad name. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. To boost their own, yeah, you know, yeah. and, the, and sadly, to boost the new order. You know. Yeah, that's exactly. And, and sadly, because it's history, it's, it's written by you know whoever was around at the time. So, so yeah, many. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming so many. You know, uh, think of things like have just been lost to time, and all we have is just the uh, the artifacts left yeah. over. It's fragments. Yeah, yeah just fragments. Uh, absolutely fascinating. Okay, thanks very much, Peter, for um, coming onto the podcast and sharing your process with us all. Oh, no worries, man. It's it uh, it great fun. Yeah, I didn't realise I could waffle for two hours. <laughs> well, you say waffle, but I mean, I picked up a lot of uh, you know tips and tricks from that. I'm sure everyone listening to us as well. So, if Thank anyone you. would like to come and listen to Pete give a presentation, you can do. He's going to be giving a presentation again on Saturday, the 6th of August. So if you just want to go to gfdnorth.uk, you can find a link to Pete's art station here, artstation.com forward slash summer pudding. <laughs> oh, don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. I've got that name. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. So you can go, you go to gfdnorth.uk, uh, get the link to Pete's work, go over to his art station, follow him. Check out some of his incredible work, and there's an absolute some of it. You can see how I mean it goes on and on. You can see how productive Pete's been. A, a, a career that lasts how long? Uh, well, technically, since I could hold a pencil, <laughs> but <laughs> That's it. Many, profe- many professionally, years. I think I started in '95. '95, uh, even before. On, I mean, I on eight, on eight grand a year. <laughs> if you can believe I, it. I think he insured you at, at, at starting at 2001, but uh, so 1995 is yeah, when it but, started. Uh, yeah, so if you think the amount of knowledge and value is absolutely <coughs> worth coming down and listening to Pete, he's, he's, I'm sure he's got absolutely tons uh, to tell you all about. So come down to GFD North on Saturday the 6th of August and come listen to Pete. It'll be an absolutely incredible lecture to listen to. And if you want to go over to YouTube and subscribe to these, we're going to go through and interview as many presenters as we possibly can before the event starts and yeah that would be great okay so just once again thank you very much pete for coming on so i've been ryan woodhouse this is episode two of gfd north podcast thank you all very much for listening goodbye cheers guys bye